Hey everybody, we are going to fill in the holes, all the questions, comments that I'm seeing on my YouTube channels, on my YouTube uh, videos about the Melissa Schumann Henschel and Nick Carter. Hmm, okay, so don't say you didn't hear it here first. So I'm going to jump right into this. So I'm looking at a computer, an iPad, and I have my cell phone on hand and some notes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and respond to some of the stuff because sometimes people are a little bit confused, but more people are watching, more people are asking questions. So I think that this deserves something. So I just wanted to say that I've made, I've made a lot of videos on this subject and I've lost a lot of subscribers because I've spent so much time on this. And I'm okay with that. But eventually I would like to get back to, you know, helping people with the life coaching thing and stuff like that. And just talking about people. But first I want to really finish what I started. And until this nightmare ends for Nick Carter, his family, and his band, I'm gonna keep on making these videos because the truth needs to come out. Because this has been a huge, enormous smear campaign against Nick Carter. And it looks like Melissa's getting really, really mouthy and tough with her words lately. She's being awfully brave right now. And so is her husband. And you know, I don't need to be on Twitter to see all this stuff. It all gets screenshot. There's nothing that could be hid from me. There's nothing that could be hid from anyone, really. Um, it's not a big deal, but there's a lot of lies, and they have to be exposed. And I'm sorry, like, there's a lot of girls that are just like, oh, can I join the His Side 2 group? Well, it's a little too late, number one. Number two, just keep using the hashtag and we invite you to our family. The most important thing is I don't ask you to, I don't, I'm not going to ask you to do anything. If you want to share the videos, I think it's great. I know that there's people next, uh, very near and dear to the Backstreet Boys that want to share my videos but they can't. So, one thing that you can spread that is very important is the blog. That is the most valuable thing to Nick Carter, his family, and I'm gonna say his publicist, everything. That has been very valuable and very key. I ask you all to keep spreading that blog to the press, to every magazine, sleazy tabloid, every media outlet that you can so that they can see where Melissa Schumann is lying, where Melissa Schumann is hiding everything, okay? Now, this is not going to be the O.J. Simpson trial, Melissa Schumann. This is just going to go away. You want this to be the whole... What do you want? You want to have him arrested? Have him put in jail on trial? Like, come on. The O.J. trial, Melissa versus Nick, is not going to happen. That's what you want. Let's get to... Melissa Schumann tried to capitalize off of Me Too. She thought that her stuff was far too in the past for everyone to find. That is true. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, yes, they did... Whatever his side two was able to find, a lot of them did their own digging. And then, of course... We also have someone in the His High 2 group that was a big dream fan back in the day. So that goes back to why didn't bandmates support Melissa Schumann? 
Um, I know that one girl from Dream was, is still her friend, really? Uh, Ashley. I haven't heard anything from the others. But Ashley is not really bothering us, so we're going to keep her out of it, okay? See, that's the thing. You don't mess with us, we don't mess with you. Okay. Polygraph. Yes, it is true that Nick Carter did take a polygraph test. They are not admissible in court, no. They're completely irrelevant. We all understand this, but it's the principle. So, if Melissa Schumann is willing to take a polygraph, I already said in another video, I will give you $10,000 to take a polygraph. She won't do it. Well, guess what, honey? That offer is now off the table because you could have did it at any time. Why don't you go on Dr. Phil? I'm sure he would love to have you because Dr. Phil reached out to Lauren Carter. Let's talk about Lauren Carter. There is someone on Twitter by the name of Ole Elaine who's trying to stir up some sort of weirdo thing uh, I guess trying to start a fire between me and Lauren, Nick's wife. Um, you know what? Ole keeps saying that me and Lauren have some sort of connection and bond. Uh, guess what? I'll tell you something. If my husband was a high profile and he was being attacked, and there was a woman out there with a bunch of girls behind her that were trying to prove my husband's innocence, you better believe I'm gonna wanna exchange some notes with her, okay? Now, is she my main source of information to what's happening? No, absolutely not. I do give her information, I do give her a heads up, So, are, are me and Lauren friends? No, we're not friends. But we have the same goal in common. We don't want Nick to be smeared all over the place and have his name all over Google as this accused rapist because Melissa Schumann who is not allowed to say the name Nick Carter. Come on, Melissa. Go on Twitter and say Nick Carter. Stop saying my abuser and acting as if you were in a relationship with him for years. Your relationship with Nick Carter was a bad one night stand for you? A less than mediocre one night stand for Nick Carter, okay? But in your head, I'm not alone in saying this. In your head, I believe that you have been obsessively in love with this boy for all of these years. That's why you could not stay away from his Twitter, from everything. That's why you can't stay away from his videos. We have um, piled high of screenshots of you praising him. Does your husband even know that? Eh, what does he care? You know what? Brandon Henschel, he's still knowing, believing the story about Nick Carter raped me. That's why I'm not a virgin. Marry me so we can be the golden couple. I'm Melissa Sherman. Lead singer of Dream. I went out on my own to pursue my own. And now I'm going to be married to a second rate Wade Robson. And like, give it up. 
you really thought you were going to be the golden couple. You thought you were going to have it all. And you know what? Sometimes things don't work out. But you know what? Instead of not being happy with your situation, you could have did things the right way. I think you need to talk to God a little louder, Melissa Schumann. It's okay for your husband to go on lip sync battle with Nick Carter standing right in front of him. But you're actually going to go on Twitter this week and attack 98 degrees. And you're going to attack Brian Luttrell and AJ McLean. Have you ever said anything to your husband? Like, why are you promoting them? Let me have, let, 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 let me see his excuse. His excuse was probably something like, it's my job, they tell me what to promote. Sure, Bruno, we believe you. We believe you. Well, all of a sudden, their best friend, the anti-former gay, James Hartline, who's not on Twitter anymore, guess what? Melissa is denouncing him on Twitter. James says what he wants. James, ba ba ba. She'll never, ever, ever admit that they were friends. Did you notice that? Melissa Schumann will never, ever acknowledge him the way that James Hartline, the anti gay activist, has portrayed this friendship perception with the, the Henschels. And you know what? If Heartline is pissed about that, I don't blame him. He was used. He was used. And now Daddy Schumann's coming to the rescue? You know what? If Mal you know what? If Melissa wants to say in her blog, I told no one. I didn't tell anybody. And then changes it into the Oz. Oh, I did tell blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now the whole thing is, is I told everyone. Well, you know what? If you told everyone, then that makes Bruno, your husband, Brandon, and Daddy Schumann a really bad husband and a really bad dad. I'm sorry, but I would expect my father okay, and my husband to protect me and not sell my soul to the devil for money. Money is just paper and you can make it anywhere. But Melissa and Daddy Schumann choose only to respond to pity, petty and childish comments and then block people with real questions. And I see this almost every day. Every single one of my videos, what is the main comment on these videos? All I did was ask Melissa a simple question and I got blocked. She was advised to take a rape kit. I thought she didn't tell anybody, but then she says she did. And Rachel's mom says, you got to go and take a rape kit. Why was she afraid to take a rape kit? Because they would know that it wasn't, you know. Look into what rape kits really are. They're, they are not cool. They are not fun. I personally have never had one, but we do have a nurse that is in the Hisai 2 group that did work with trauma patients, tra with women. And she brings up a lot of valid points and she's been helping us the whole nine months. Not once in Melissa's blog does she talk about how she bled. I don't know about you girls, I don't know if we're all different, but did I bleed when I lost my virginity? I did. It wasn't like massive all over the place, but I did. Um, and it was painful for me. 
the first time and the second time. And in her blog, she doesn't talk about that. But one thing that I called her out on in that blog was wait a second, wait a second. She's not talking about the condom. It takes about 20 seconds to take a condom, open it up. He has to get up off of Melissa, pinch it, roll it on. He'll probably kiss her first and then, what is that inside me? Okay, when I say I don't like my intelligence insulted, this is the shit that I'm talking about. What is that inside me? She saw him putting on the condom. Nick likes the lights on. He doesn't like the lights off. I remember that. I believe in her blog, she said that she turned off the light because she didn't want to see what was happening. Mm -mm. Moving room to room? I don't know about you, but when I heard Nick's version of what happened, to know that a virgin is giving a BJ and moaning, in a bathroom? That's not how a girl loses her virginity. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, that's not how it goes. She should have told him that she was a virgin. He didn't know, according to what he's saying. He didn't know. She never mentioned that she was a virgin or that she wanted to wait till marriage. I'm just saying, lies all over the place. Lies. Who's lying, Nick or Melissa? Who's lying? Nick gave one statement to the press. How many times did Melissa? Now this is all about your credibility. How many lies, lies upon lies have we caught her in? Too many to count. Way too many to count. Go to her IMDB. It says things like, she was supposed to be in Fiddler on the Roof, but because of insurance issues, she wasn't. Who put that up there? She was supposed to be in Rent on Broadway in New York, playing Maureen, but that didn't happen. They wanted to keep the original cast. Okay, so she auditioned. But why would that be on IMDb? You know what, there were things that I have done, movies that I filled in for when they didn't have a makeup artist, if they, if they lost their makeup artist. I, at the end of closing credits, the main makeup artist, you know, maybe even two or three got the credit, I didn't. And I used to check and I used to be like, mm. Her Sharon Osbourne appearance. Go look at that clip. Look what it says. I don't believe it was ever aired, but she still puts it up there. So, attention, attention, attention. This is the best part. Her bread and butter right now is Twitter because it got verified. Okay, now Melissa wants to say that I'm the one trying to make fans. Well, let me tell you something, Melissa Schumann, because I know you're watching this video. If I was trying to make fans, why in God's green earth would I have a business, Molly Go Lightly? Why would I have stationary Molly Go Lightly? Molly's the ugliest name in the entire world is all about Breakfast at Tiffany's theme in my office, okay? And my little brand 
of talking to people, okay? It's a very happy name for a life coach. It sounds happy. People like it, okay? Why would I try to get famous with a fake name? When if I do reality shows and sign autographed pictures with my real name, how many people have gotten autographed pictures of me with my name on it? Uh, how many this week? If you got a autographed picture from me just in the past week or two, it has my real name. It doesn't say Molly Golightly. A lot of people like the TV stuff. They don't even care about the Nick Carter stuff, okay? A lot of them are following my videos because they remember me from TV. So, who's the one trying to gain fans? You want an autograph picture? I'm signing for you. I don't know what the hell you're going to do with it. But I'm not looking to be a star. I'm not looking to be the next Nancy Grace. I'm not looking to be on Broadway or, or any talk shows, okay? They've called me. If you think that they have not called me, you're crazy. You're crazy. You think I haven't? Oh, yeah. Reporter that reached out to you from CBS? Spoke to him too. Didn't hear from him anymore, did you? I kind of feel like Mr. Miyagi when he's got the uh, when he's got the uh, chopsticks and he's trying to get the little the little fly that's buzzing around. Yeah, that's how I that's how I feel. Mr. Miyagi and the Karate Kid trying to get the little flies. And if you think. I'm ever gonna give you the opportunity of me going on a talk show to talk about this, to give you more publicity, you are out of your mind. I would never do that. And that proves right there that I'm not doing this for popularity and fans. I could do that shit on my own, okay? Why do you keep all of the hate comments up on your fan page? Oh, by the way, I don't have a fan page. Melissa Schulman has a Facebook fan page. But she keeps all the hate comments up. Did you ever notice that? Why are they still up? If you put a hate comment on Twitter, what does she do? You're blocked. You're blocked. So, you know, I got people asking me, you know, why does she do that? Why does Melissa Schumann block everybody? Because Melissa does not like the fact that you're calling her out on the truth. Now, how am I to predict how this is going to end. I can't. I don't believe that there is anything to investigate with Nick Carter. I think there is so much more solid proof. And you are so lucky, girl, that you deleted a lot of stuff. But some things you didn't. And when I catch the email, when I catch that email of where you were banging, you were bragging about banging one of the Backstreet Boys. That doesn't sound like a virgin to me. That's not virgin talk. They don't, use, they don't use the word banging, okay? Even I had enough class in my, and you know what? I didn't even say it in the National Enquirer. When I gave my National Enquirer diary to them, they said, made love to Nick. I didn't say that. That's not my words. I wouldn't say that. We didn't make love. But now, 20 years later, I joke about it. I'll go, we made love. Like that. And it's funny. <laughs> love. At least it's a classier way of putting it. And I never said I felt used and discarded like an old shoe. That's not my verbiage at all. I didn't feel used and discarded. I knew 
And we're going back to the tabloid. Listen, I didn't feel used and discarded. How I felt was disappointed that Nick Howie and AJ would choose to believe Marie's lies and craziness, knowing that she was the one following them around city to city, city to city. They didn't find out until way after when I told Howie she was going to say that she was freaking pregnant. I did nothing to Nick. I did nothing to Nick. I was never bashing him. All I was trying to do was tell Marie, listen, you're taking this shit way too personal. And she went to go sell that story to National Enquirer. When I got the heads up, I called them and went, mine. And when they came back and said, eh, it's not that much of a story. Because the way that she was putting it was she was tossed around and blah, blah, blah. I don't know because the woman that did that story said she could not tell me. But I did agree to let them say that we were supposed to meet them around the corner at the McDonald's in Times Square and go back, you know, and go shopping with them and blah, blah, blah. We did that. I know that we were supposed to, um, wait, what happened? We were supposed to go to a movie. I think AJ said, let's go to a movie. Something happened and we didn't go because I don't know what the hell happened, but something happened, but we were around and we were supposed to go to the movie. And Marie was, was really like, oh my God, we have to go to this movie with them. And I'm like, God, God, like who cares about a movie? Who cares about like going shopping? Like, let's like just hang out and be chill. Like, why do we have to be in the public? Like, I was totally fine, you know, with giving AJ a bath. I was dressed and he was in the bathtub and I had the soap and I was just talking to him. We were talking about how I was just at the VMAs and how Janet Jackson had given me and my friends tickets. He was like, oh my God, it's so cool. I was telling him, oh my God, you have the prettiest eyelashes. I told him, God, what else was I telling him? I was like, oh, that's, the, that's when he said, you should come and come meet us in Canada. And I said, I don't like you that much. He goes, oh, okay. Just like that. But Marie, she wanted to go to Canada. She wanted to go see them everywhere. She got on a plane and went to a concert in Orlando in those couple of months. And I said, I gotta go to work. I spent way too much time sneaking around the Millennium Broadway Hotel, going up and down and blah, blah, blah. like, sorry. You know what? All these girls that have been around him for all these years, they may have had quote unquote bad experiences. You know what? Nick hung up the phone on me once. Mm hmm. Around Thanksgiving. Mm hmm. He did. And then I was in his room. The last time that I had seen him was the night that they did with Julianne Moore. Uh, Saturday Night Live, Julianne Moore. It was a Saturday and I was with these Polish girls, really pretty. And what we did was, we didn't want to be around the fans. We kept hopping to bar, from bar to restaurant. And we were able to watch them do the chair dance from one of the restaurants right by Rockefeller Center. And then they were staying at a Sheridan and I walked my ass up there by myself. I ran into, I ran into, well, who was it? Uh, I said hello to Brian. I said, Brian, where's Nick? And he said, over there. And Nick, Nick, I went over to Nick's room and who, who comes walking out of her, her own room or someone's room really, really pissed? It was, Mar her name was Marissa. It was AJ's ex-girlfriend, Johnny Wright's stepdaughter. And... Nick opened the door. I knocked on Nick's door and he's like, yeah, who is it? And I go, it's Marissa. And he goes, 
Marissa, I've been hearing so much shit from Maria about you. Now, this is some true stuff. And I'm like, I can imagine. I haven't talked to her in months. The girl went ape shit. And he goes, I just don't know if I can trust you. And I remember saying, oh my God, Nick, are you serious? Oh, honey, just open the door. And he did. And I went in there and I said, listen, Marie lost her shit and she's been against me, got me locked out of the place that I was living. They robbed me. They went and stole all my pictures. They, she came to my job. Um, she called up my manager saying she was going to come there and kick my butt. She started a lot. And I'm telling this to Nick. I'm like, the girl is the biggest troublemaker in the entire world. He goes, are you really Puerto Rican? Because Marissa says you're not. And I went, what? He goes, and she also said that you, you're, that basically where I worked, that I didn't actually work there. And I'm like, she ate there. She came there. And I'm looking at her, I go, listen, Nick. I go, you have a choice here. And I'm being dead serious. I was like, does this sound normal to you? And he goes, I just don't know. And I said, listen, I respect you as an artist and I respect you as a man. And I remember the little look on his face. This kid did not have to let me in his room, okay? This kid did not have to give me an opportunity to say what I needed to say. But he did. So don't tell me that he's a fucking monster because he's fucking not. Because had he not given me that opportunity to tell him that he needed to be careful around that girl. Who knows what she would have said in that story if I didn't steal it from her. And what happened with me, what I got a few thousand dollars for it and then had to go for, what, five, six years feeling really guilty? I didn't want that. I hated it. I wish that I could take it back. And when I went to Santa Barbara, I met up with the woman, her name was Ellen Goodstein, that wrote the story. And I told her, I said, I hate it that I did that. And she said, why? And I said, because he didn't deserve it. And she goes, honey, I wish I could have talked you out of it. If I would have known that you would have been so hurt by that. And I said, he didn't do anything. She goes, but that's how we make stories. That's how, that's how things, that's how we make our business. She goes, but you're the second person that I've ever had to, had to hear that they regret selling it. She goes, and I wish now that I would have stopped you. She goes, but I didn't think that you were going to be that hurt by it. And I'm like, and this is in 2005. So we're, my husband was in Iraq. This is in 2005. I was living in Hollywood I, and I drove up to Santa Barbara. Nice Jewish lady. And we had dinner. And I said, you know, tell me the facts. And she said, well, what I can tell you is she goes, I am a lawyer. And, you know, we had to really look into your story and make sure, you know, that he was under that name, Jose Canseco, when you said that he was. We looked at those pictures of the room and, and matched them with the clothes. She goes, everything that you said, she goes, we had to make sure that we were putting the truth in that you were there. She goes, but the rest... I had to make it sound more, what do you call it? And she said, Marissa, don't worry. You did not hurt their career. She goes, we don't intentionally try to ruin careers. That's what she said. And I said, she said, we did reach out to them. I said, and what happened? She goes, well, we're supposed to, we have to send out something to alert the PR or something like that. She said, she goes, and what we got back was 
Alexander James McLean and Nicholas Jean Carter do not confirm or deny their relations with Marissa Gonzalez. That's what she said. So, don't sit there and tell me that this guy is some sort of monster. Okay? And if you think that this guy, Nick Carter, is going to sit there and be like, okay, so my version of the story is, oh uh, yeah, and then she blah, blah, blah. He's not going to do that. Are you kidding me? You think he's going to go on TV and say something like that? No. Why? Why did I do it? Why was I given all the notes? Why was I? Who's been speaking for him? Me. And he has a paid publicist, a guy. And he has the blog. It's, and I hope that it's useful to him. I believe it is. Because that's very important stuff. That blog. It's got all the truth. And you know what? There's a lot of fans that are saying that they thank me for putting in these personal, you know, antidotes into my videos of my interactions with him. You know what? It was very long ago. And I do, I'm not, I'm not I wasn't a person that thought about this shit on a daily basis, okay? You have to remember that. Like, I don't. Only any times over the years that I've ever really thought about Backstreet Boys is if they came up, if I was, if I heard them on an overhead speaker, if something just popped up, I would think about them, but I wouldn't go, ah. You know? I never said that their music is bad. I just prefer a different genre of music. Period. So, you know, it all goes back to sources. You know what? This girl really wants to, this Ole Elaine cause a rift between me and Nick Carter's wife. Well, I don't think you're going to get far with that because you know what? She's not stupid. We know who's behind that Ole Elaine. We're not stupid people. So, the Henschels, the Schumans can call anyone with the hashtag his side to trolls, but who are the real trolls? Who are the real trolls? Okay? We'll see how this ends up. Thank you for watching.